Narayanam namaskritam naman shavam nagautamam daivam sasate vyasam tato jayam muhurayat nashtaprashu badreshu tembago sevaya tutama pakli choke vagri pakti vanaishtake. So we're reading today from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 6, and as far as I understand, we're reading, chap- we're reading text 10 and text 11. I think you m- someone might want to move the board over a little because then this way everyone can see. Okay. I, I think that's fine. Very, uh, the Matajis can see also? Tasmin stanam du jaraviriyam ulbanam Goran kamadaya shishya dadovata Garham karambiyam bhagavan prapidyatar Renai samam rosa samavita pibas Tasmin stanam du jaraviriya mulbanam Gorang kamadaya shishyur dayav dadavata Gadham karambiyam bhagavan prapiryatat Pranay samam rausa samam vitopibar Tasmin sanam du jara virya malbamam Gorang kamadaya shishyurda davata Garham karambiyam bhagavan prapiryatat Pranay samam rosa samavito apibat Please chant. Ram Bhagavan Hi, Samam Rosa Samavita Viva. That's when Sanam do Jayaviram Ubanam. Goran Kamadaya Shishoda Ravata. Param Karabiam Bhagavan Prapidyatat. Pranam samam rosa samai vya piva. Mataji. That's men samam Tasmin, in that very spot. Stanam, the breast. Dujaraviryam, a very powerful weapon mixed with poison. Ulbanam, which was fierce. Gora, the most ferocious Putana. Ankam, on her lap. Adaya, placing Shisho in the mouth of the child. Dado, pushed. Atha, thereupon. Gadham, 
very hard. Karambiam, with both hands. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prapidya, giving her great pain. Tat Pranay, her life. Saman, along with. Rosa Samam Vitaha, being very angry at her. Epibat, sucked the breast. Srila Prabhupada's translation and purport. On that very spot, the fiercely dangerous Rakshasi took Krishna on her lap and pushed her breast into his, his mouth. The nipples of her breast were smeared with a dangerous, immediately effective poison. But the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, becoming very angry at her, took hold of her breast, squeezed it very hard with both hands, and sucked out both the poison and her life. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Lord Krishna was not angry at Putana for his own sake. Rather, he was angry because the Rakshasi had killed so many small children in Vraj Bhumi. Therefore, he decided that she should be punished by having to forfeit her life. Also, I'm understanding we're reading text 11. Samuncha munchalamiti pravasini nishpidyamanakila jiva maramani viritya nitri charano bajon muhu pravasni gatra shipati rudho hata. Srila Prabhupada's translation. Unbearably pressed in every vital point, the demon Putana began to cry. Please leave me, leave me, suck my breast no longer. Perspiring, her eyes wide open and her arms and legs failing, she cried very loudly again and again. Srila Prabhupada's purport, the Rakshasi was severely punished by Krishna. She threw her arms and legs about, and Krishna also began to kick her with his legs to punish her properly for her mischievous activity. Oh, my God, Nagala Shalapaya Jakshu and Nanatam Yena That's my Shri Guru Venamaham I'm just saying the first part and then I will uh, so that we don't take very much time um, I wanted to well first of all this verse is quite amazing these two verses I think um, they're quite appropriate in one sense that um, there are no brahmacharis here <laughs> and um, it's all the grahastas that are here and all the wonderful devotees that are assisting the brahmacharis to take some time out uh, or maybe not time out I'm sure that where, where they are they are very much engaged in Krishna's service however they're a little bit getting a chance to have some quiet time some downtime and everyone needs that so I'm very fortunate to be able to um, be, have been asked to give this class when there's just a little family here, the small family, so you can give me protection. This whole, actually this whole part of this pastime is all about Krishna's shelter and Krishna's protection. And specifically these two verses, which I thought were, um, these two verses are verses that could really get somebody in trouble. So I had to really kind of meditate, okay, what, what, what to talk about Krishna with these two verses. So before I speak about anything uh, in relationship to the, the, the Srila Prabhupada's translation and, and purport, I wanted to share uh, to everyone how much gratitude my husband, Ekivir Prabhu, and I have for this community here in Chaupati. Um, almost two months ago, we came here to stay for four days. And... Uh, <laughs> As some of you may know, somehow those four days kept getting extended and extended and extended. Not anything we were doing, just somehow by the order of Radha Gopinath, um, many different things have happened in, in these uh, almost two months. What we have come to understand is that Radha Gopinath simply wanted us to, um, to see the mercy that's here in this community. And for us to go away from here appreciating and acknowledging everything that we have received here in um, Radha Gopinath's temple. So I'd like to first offer my, our gratitude, Ekvir Prabhu and myself, because we're leaving in two days, 
let's see. But that's the plan. Well, they say we make our plans and Krishna laugh. So let's see if Krishna will laugh this time. But anyway, we're supposed to leave in a couple of days. And I most um, specifically would like to offer our gratitude to His Holiness Shula Radhanath Maharaj, who we have seen throughout the years, not just recently. We've been very fortunate to have known him for many years. And we have seen that in his history of a devotee, that one of his primary characteristics is to always give shelter. This is his kindness. He's always giving caring shelter to the devotees. And in his capacity, he's always protecting the devotees in so many different ways. And you see that here in Chopati, how the devotees are so protected. They are protected because they are lovingly cared for. All uh, of your needs, all of the de things that you may need to be a devotee, to practice devotional service, are being provided. So many different classes, so many amazing kirtans, so many wonderful ways of seeing how the Lord is worshipped, so much nice prasadam, everything that you can think of to shelter a devotee is here in Chopati. And so for that, we really, really from the bottom of our, of our hearts want to thank Jula Radnat Maharaj for giving us an opportunity to be a part of this loving shelter that all of you have here. Secondly, we would like to appreciate the devotees that have stayed here and are offering their services so that those devotees that are here always doing the services can go and have some time together. Um, specifically, we're speaking about the brahmacharis. As we know, they're, they're not here for one and a half day. They will be back today. And um, the grihastas are doing all the services in the temple. And so the deities are beautifully, beautifully dressed. This is the grihastas that are offering the service for the, to, the, to the Lord and for the pleasure of the devotees, again, for this loving shelter that we all so much need. So I wanted to thank those devotees for showing us this interdependency that is so important in our devotee communities. Devo devotees, sometimes there may be the tendency for us to be a little independent, but actually uh, I, a, uh, a young lady of 95 told uh, my husband and I, a few years ago when we were caring for his ailing father, who has since left his body, she was like 97 or something, 96 or 97. And she was getting in her car, actually, and she was getting ready to drive. And I thought, how is this lady going to drive? And so I approached her, given the nature, the kind of person that I am. I approached her and I said, are you going to be okay? And she says, yes, of course. I have been driving since I was 20-something years old or something. And now I'm 97 and I'm still driving. <laughs> she says, but I'll tell you something. She says, independence is very costly, extremely costly. She says, because I have to take care of this car. I have to make sure that everything that I'm get, what, before I get in the car, I'm protected in so many ways. I have to make sure everything in the car is protected. And I have to make sure where I'm going, somebody's there to meet me. So many different things I need to think about because I want to be independent. And so this is a natural tendency of human nature. We want to be independent even when we get 97 years old. What is wonderful the shelter that we see in the Chopati community is the interdependence among the devotees. So they're showing this example to the world that we're not independent. Yes, we all have identities. We, we do have our identity. However, we're interdependent on each other. And, and you can see that in every aspect of the temple environment. As you walk in the door, you can, you can get this greeting of this interdependency amongst the devotees. So we want to thank you for that lesson. It's, um, it's a lesson that will serve us, we are sure, as we go on to serve other devotees. We would also like to thank the counselors of this community because the counselors have extended their invitations to us in so many different uh, environments, in their homes, in their offices, in um, their workplace, so many different ways for us to be able to do some service, which is the workshops that we offer, and they have engaged us in that way, so that we, didn't, we weren't here not being engaged, which is really wonderful. We were able to somehow offer some very small service, and they were always encouraging. So again, here is this mood of support. 
So here we are, we're coming in the community and they're supporting us, fully giving us all and all the, all the facilities to offer some service to their counselees. So to the counselors, we thank you very much. The counselors here in Chopati and also the counselors in Mira Road at the hospital. The Mira Road counselors, they have been so amazing to us, facilitated us in so many ways. Spiritual care, we thank you so very much. Um, we also would like to offer our appreciations, our, our gratitude to the devotees that make Radagopinath's garlands. These are amazing, amazing, amazing ladies. Um, very incredible. I will tell many stories about these ladies as, as we travel around the world. Because these ladies are here, most of them very early in the morning before 5 o'clock. And yes, I will get to the purport. <laughs> However, this is so important for, for us to be able to share these few words of gratitude. So these ladies, they are here before 5 o'clock in the mornings. And generally, while the devotees are dancing in front of Radha Gopinath, these ladies are at Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet making, making garlands, making the garlands for the morning uh, dressing of the Lord. So it is like being in the spiritual world when we come into the temple in the mornings because we see these ladies like the gopis, they're serving the Lord and, and just so enthusiastically and eagerly serving. And then not only do they do that service in the mornings when everyone is dancing in front of the Lord, but then they, they, during the class, they, they're not able to directly sit and listen to the class, but they're right there listening as they make these garlands for the Lord throughout the day. So in the mornings, they're usually there from uh, until 11 o'clock, sometimes 12 o'clock if they're, if they're festivals. And, and they're just there making garlands. And it's the most beautiful thing when I come in the mornings. I must admit, there's one little thing I haven't shared with them. Um, I always want to help with the service, but I always feel so nervous and so scared that I never can make a proper garland for Krishna because I don't, I never learned that service. And I, I think, wow, Krishna, this is an opportunity to have learned that service. These Matajis, they're so dedicated, so enthusiastic. However, I, I did not act on that intuitive understanding. So I'm sure Radha Gopinath will give me another chance. <laughs> I have no doubt. So I wanted to thank these Matajis because um, they're inspiration. Yes, they're inspiration for me as, as we um, talk about this verse, these verses which are based on Krishna's protection and Krishna's shelter. And then um, two last uh, gratitudes for the devotees in the guest house. You know, taking care of guests is not such an easy service because you have to take care of their washing, their food, their this, you know, their that, their little needs and... Then you have the swamis that may come that may have some other needs and you have to personally care for the swamis. So these devotees, they're most patient and most tolerant, most amazing devotees. They are whatever you may need, you just call and then it's just there, just like that. These devotees are like copper riksha trees. They're just providing anything that you might want, anything that not want, but anything you may need in, in, um, in, in caring for the physical body or even caring for the mind, sometimes they're available. So I wanted to express my gratitude to these devotees. Um, their services are, are, are so important to show the example that's here in this community. And then lastly, I wanted to thank those devotees that sometimes we might think are not so significant. Sometimes in devotional life, there's a tendency that we may see devotees and we have these different systems, a hierarchy system. This one has been around longer, that one not so long. This one does this service, not so, this one does this other service. But in actuality, all of the devotee services combinedly is what is what's making this amazing garland for Shishi Radha and Krishna, for Shishi Radha Gopinath. So those devotees that are cleaning this Gopinath temple, those devotees that are cleaning Gopinath's kitchen, those devotees that are cleaning outside of the temple, those devotees that are cleaning inside of the rooms, a any day in the guest room, we can say, any time of the day, Prabhu's, can you clean our room? They will be there. It doesn't matter. So those devotees are very special for this garland that is being created, that, I he that is here. It's already here in Radha Gopinath Temple. So we want to thank all of you very much for encouraging us, supporting us, facilitating us, inspiring us, and in every way, helping us to really want to taste the nectar 
that's a part of this bhakti, this devotional service. So Radha Gopinath devotees, His Holiness Srila Radha Maharaj, thank you very much. Haribo. So now we'll get a little bit to the purport. <laughs> so this is an interesting purport. Uh, Okay, so we have the story of Putana, which we've been hearing, many devotees, many, actually what's really beautiful is that this pastime have been heard by some of, many of the children in our devotee communities, because the mothers, they read Krishna book, and they tell these pastimes to the children in the womb. So many of the children that are here, they've heard these pastimes. And for those of us that, were not, that are not so fortunate to come to Krishna consciousness from the womb, we have been hearing these pastimes because they are very important to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada has said that it is very important for, our, for his devotees to hear the pastimes of Krishna. Very, very important. Anybody wants to share just really quickly, and I promise I won't do this very much. I do workshops, so it's always interactive, and I'm always having this tendency to be interactive. But I want to ask any one of you, why did Srila Prabhupada say that it is important to read these pastimes of Krishna, these Leela? Anyone want to share? Just really quickly. I know there's some Sashtra devotees here. There's some, many devotees here with realizations. There's many devotees that are Prabhupada conscious. Why did Srila Prabhupada say it is important to read Prabhupada's, these Leela, these pastimes of Krishna? I'm sorry, could you say that a little louder? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, yes, because these pastimes actually help us in many, many, many different ways. One of the most important ways that these pastimes are assisting us in our devotional life is by helping us to really develop an understanding and some realizations of who actually is Krishna. Because we, from these pastimes, we get an opportunity to learn about Krishna's qualities. Who is this Krishna that we're all worshiping? What is it about this Krishna that all of us are running to the temple in the mornings before 4.30 in the mornings? And what is it that makes us run back in the evenings? And what is it that keeps us chanting our japa? Who is this Krishna? So Krishna, we know, has 64 qualities. And there are many additional qualities of Krishna that's not, that are not even explained, that we cannot even begin to explain. But there's one quality that I would like to speak about a little bit today. And that's the quality of Krishna that is powerful. Krishna is extremely powerful. It's really important for us to remember this power of Krishna. Because sometimes there's a tendency for those that are uh, materialistic to think, I am powerful. I am the one that has some power. And this tendency comes from this materialistic consciousness that Prabhupada has described that is Kamsa consciousness. So we know the story. We know the story of how uh, Putana is Krishna's uh, agent. He's sent by, sent by Pam, Kamsa, I'm sorry, Putana, sent by Kamsa. She has a job description. Her job description is to kill young children, just like in the material world, people have job descriptions, right? So that's her job description. Somebody may ask, why is it that a woman has this kind of job description to kill children. What is that? So Krishna explains, he explains that actually there are the divine and the demoniac. And in Bhagavad Gita, in the whole 16th chapter, Krishna gives examples of the nature of different personalities. And he explains who's the, who are divine and who are demoniac. And so the, these personalities often take different roles. So in this case, Putana, who happens to be in a, in a woman's body, happens in this case. She's a very interesting person. It's explained actually by our Acharyas that Putana in her past life was the uh, daughter of Bali Maharaj, right? Her older or younger sister of Bali Maharaj. Actually, the Vaivata Purana explains that Putana 
was the sister of Bali Maharaj in a previous life. And what happened is Putana saw this young child that had come to see Bali Maharaj. Who was that child? Lord Vamanadev. And Lord Vamanadev, he is a brahmachari, right? In that particular pastime. He's playing the role of a brahmacharya. So he's very young, he's very effulgent, he's beautiful. He's the, the, the child everyone wants because his beauty is so effulgent. It's just like if you are a parent and you see a young child, sometimes we see, I'm a parent. I'm actually not just a parent, I'm a grandmother. And so sometimes we see a younger um, child come into the temple room, and I've seen in Mongol Arctic, and they're dressed, you know, with their dhoti and their kurta, and you just go like, whoa, so beautiful. You just look at the child instead of looking at Krishna, right? That has happened to me. So like that, you, you, you get very enamored by seeing these young children. And so what happened is she became very attracted to Lord Vamanadev as a young child. And she thought, I would like to have this child as my son. So that was her meditation. She wanted that child as her son. This is a maternal affection that she was displaying. But what happened? So there's a turn of events, as you all know, that pastime. And so Vamanadev takes all of the land from Bali Maharaj. And so, so many different things, you know, transpire in this particular pastime. And then somehow Vamanadev becomes someone that's like now, in her mind, like an enemy. So she still thinks, though, I will have this child as my child, but I will kill him. This is what I will do. Once, once he's my child, I will kill him. So Krishna benedicted her, right? In her next life, now she's getting this opportunity to try to kill Krishna. So this is Putana. She's not just an ordinary person. She's a very special person in one sense. And as Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's leelas, Krishna is doing many different things, bringing many different messages to humankind, not just for now, not just for the different, the yugas before Kali Yugas, but even continuously, even after this Kali Yuga, Krishna's pastimes will still be there. Krishna's pastimes are eternal. And so these pastimes, as we said, are to help us to connect with who is this person, Krishna? Who is Krishna? So now we've heard a little bit about who is Putana. Putana uh, represents this materialistic culture. She's coming from Kamsa. Who is who? Kamsa is the chief of the materialists. And is it that we have a problem with materialistic people? Is it that devotees of the Lord are judging and not wanting to um, have any kind of affection for materialistic people? No, we're simply saying that in this world, in this world, there are people that are loving and wanting to understand and care about the personality of Godhead so that they can extend some of that care to others. And we're saying that materialistic, in materialistic society, this is a temporary condition, and this temporary condition can only bring pain. It will never really bring satisfaction to the soul, because that is explained in all scriptures, not just the Bhagavad Gita. Every major scripture, about the Bible, the Quran, every major scripture explains that the soul is to be nurtured to love. And who are we loving? We're loving God. Even when there is no clear example of who is God, there is still some understanding of some, some, something supreme, something greater than who we are. And so the soul is being nurtured in that way. Now, if the soul is not nurtured in that way, then what will the soul be doing? Then persons in materialistic society will be nurturing destructive mentality which is what we see in the world today. Everywhere we go, even in Mumbai, I'm very amazed when I go out and I see these billboards. I mean, really, these billboards are bigger than some of the billboards in America. In, if any of you have, they are huge billboards. And these billboards have everything that you can think of in materialistic society. I remember when I first started coming to India, which was in 1980, these billboards were nowhere like this, nothing like this. And so now I'm like thinking, wow, what is happening? What is happening? Even in India, where you used to come and just take shelter, 
Shelter meant it, you didn't have to go to a temple to take shelter in India. You can just come somewhere to anywhere and you can feel Krishna's presence somehow in the people, you know, in the culture. But now when you, anywhere you go, you see this materialistic culture. So it's kind of this struggle, right, between the divine and the demoniac. And so the, demo, the, the demoniac brings this materialistic culture. And so the devotees, we are saying, this materialistic culture will not serve us. It really will not serve us. In the end, it brings us pain. And most importantly, Krishna explained in Bhagavad Gita, it will only give, give us another birth. And that birth, the society will become even more materialistic as Kali Yuga advances, right? So then what? What happens as Kali Yuga advances? We see it's difficult to function in it now. What is it going to be like, you know, 300 years from now, 400 years from now? What? What will happen? Of course, it's all explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, the beauty and the mercy of the shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, again, we want to understand this person, Putana, and why Putana is described in this way of being fierce, and she's, you know, these, these examples that, that's given is, 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 is pretty... Um, descriptive of, of Putana, she's, Prabhupada is explaining that, you know, she's, she's like a mean person, she's a fierce person, she's, a, she's an angry person, and she's coming now to destroy, she's coming to destroy religious principles. And what does Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita? What is the verse that Krishna says? That he comes actually. Why does Krishna come? He comes to Say, you can say that loudly. Yada, yada, he And he comes, Lenny Babatel, for what? Yes, he comes. So because, he under, because Krishna knows there's this miscreants that will be here to destroy the world. So Krishna comes and he has these playful pastimes. So this is like a play. He's having this playful pastime with Putana. So it's not our material senses and our t material mind that tends to want to put this pastime into a box. Oh, this sounds so horrible. What is this? Krishna is getting angry? And, and for a very materialistic mind, someone may think, and Krishna is getting angry at a woman. How is it possible? How can Krishna get angry at a woman? And then, for a very, very materialistic mind, they think, not only is he getting angry at a woman, but he's sucking her breast and killing her. What kind of a god is this? Who is this God? If you try to explain this to a materialistic person, will they understand? Not likely. Not likely. It will take quite a lot of, I think, purity to help someone that's very steeped in materialism to understand this pastime. And even as devotees, you know, I don't really understand this pastime. I may have some intellectual understanding from having read the pastime many times, heard the pastimes many times, However, because Srila Prabhupada said, if we hear attentively, and if we hear, at, attempting to hear with sincerity, then the Lord reveals within the heart. And so we try to understand through the mouth of Srila Prabhupada, through the mouth of Srila Prabhupada's representatives, his devotees. And in that way we repeat, as we have heard them say, not that we ourselves have any real understanding of these pastimes, because these pastimes are very deep. As we read these pastimes, we learn many, many, many different things about Krishna and how Krishna interacts with his devotees, for his devotees, and here with the demons. So yes, he does these things with Putana, but there's a reason behind it. And so, Prabhupada, Prabhupada is explaining that here is um, Krishna, becoming angry at Putana. And he's angry at Putana because, not because of him. He's not angry at Putana because for himself. We see in the materialistic world, when we become angry, we become angry because someone has done something to us, right? We're defending ourselves. Eating, mating, sleeping, and defending. So we're defending ourselves. Somebody said something to us, done something to us, and we cannot tolerate it, so we become angry. This is an emotion, right? So this emotion then can become um, very prominent in our minds. For example, when we read the pastime of Daksha, and we hear, how angry did Daksha become, right? And Lord Shiva, so angry was this emotion 
that it took over his entire consciousness. And what did that consciousness do in that environment? Daksha was so annoyed, he was so angry, he was so disturbed. It's okay, he can, please, it's all right. He's very exhausted, very tired, and it's quite all right. <laughs> so he was so, so disturbed, Daksha, and we know that pastime, that he did all these curses. And this is what happened. This is the tendency of materialistic consciousness. We, we become overtaken by anger. But what is the difference in this pastime? Krishna is angry, not for himself. Krishna is angry. Why? Because he is wanting to protect the residents of Rajabhumi. Here is this uh, person that's coming and destroying all these children. She is coming with an agenda. She has a motive. She wants to kill the children. And Krishna's entire um, role as, as, as God, as, as, as the supreme personality of Godhead, is to give shelter and to protect his devotees. So he could not tolerate that. He could not tolerate that his, uh, this person would be here in this community and destroy the devotees. Just like I'm sure all of you, if somebody came into this community to uh, destroy any one of you, I'm sure, I'm sure Prabhu here, he will be the, one of the first ones to be at the door, at the gate. You cannot even come in the gate, right? I, I totally know that. I totally get that you will be such a person that will protect the devotees. So this is coming from Krishna. Krishna is wanting to protect the devotees. Krishna is wanting to give shelter. So in this way, it's ex Prabhupada is explaining that, so Krishna wasn't angry for himself. It's a difference in this anger. Please try to understand this point. I am also very much uh, praying to understand this point, that Krishna is, ne is not angry like ordinary persons. It's not this is God. He doesn't have the same anger. This is called transcendental anger. It's totally beyond the mode of goodness, even beyond the mode of sattva gun. He's totally, totally, totally beyond all of the modes of material nature. And so in this anger, though, in this transcendental anger, it looks a little bit like the anger that we have in the material world, a little bit, but it's not. It's, it's not. And so... But in materialistic society, what happens when we get this anger? This anger usually comes from a consciousness of domination. In materialistic society, one of the qualities of materialistic society is a domination culture. And in a domination culture, what do we have going on in domination culture? It's a power over others. I have power over you. Therefore, if you do something that is disturbing to my mind, then because I have power over you, I can then destroy you, put you away, hurt you in some way, uh, not acknowledge you, not give you any kind of encouragement. I can do so many things if I have power over you. This is a symptom of materialistic culture. But in transcendental culture, Krishna's anger is directed at protection, at giving shelter, at caring. And in this way, we have this example of why Krishna gets angry. Because he wants to protect, he wants to care for the residents of Vrindavan. And so someone can ask, well, here, here's Putana. Why isn't he protecting her, even if she is a demon? This is God. God is supposed to protect everyone. Krishna is supposed to protect everyone. Why, why won't he protect Putana? So, as the pastime goes on, which I won't share because there's so many classes to be given about this pastime, but Krishna does protect Putana. Krishna gives Putana the ultimate shelter, gives Putana so much shelter, more than he'd given to any of the other demons that he had killed. He gives her this shelter of being actually in the spiritual world, which is quite amazing. You see, the difference in material culture is when we get angry, we become resentful, we become grudgeful, we destroy people, we don't want them in our midst, we, we complain about them all the time, we criticize them, we find fault with them. There's nothing good about those persons when we're in materialistic culture and we become angry, for whatever it may be, for whatever the reasons may be. Anger is such an emotion that it is so strong, Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, that it can take the mind totally away from the consciousness of who we are, absolutely away from the fact that we are spirit souls, 
We are not this body. Prabhupada gives this example, Bhagavad Gita 101. You are not this body. You are a spirit soul. I am a spirit soul. You're a spirit soul. We're not these material bodies. But yet, because we're conditioned in this world by being in the body, then we identify with the body. And when we identify with the body, then what? We also identify with the mind because the mind is a part of the body. It's a subtle body, right? And so when we are identifying with the mind and the body, then we tend to act through these materialistic conditioning that we have had for lifetimes after lifetimes after lifetimes. So let us not confuse the power of Krishna with the power of the conditioned souls. There is no, no comparison, absolutely no comparison. Our power, our limited power, our little bit of power that we may have, which we have because we are parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so we have, Krishna has benedicted us with free will. We do have some small power. But that power is minuscule. It's very insignificant. It's very small. And it definitely has none of the qualities of the anger of Krishna. So this, these emotions, it's really important uh, for me as well as everyone to understand the differences in these emotions. And so, in this pastime, in this Leela Shakti pastime, this most amazing pastime, we learn also that um, there is, um, given by the Acharyas, which I won't go into very much, but there is a um, other way of looking at this pastime. And this pastime of Putana is described as an anartha. And that anartha, anartha means unwanted things in us. And those unwanted things is uh, the pseudo guru, right? Pseudo guru means like false teachers. Like when someone is first coming and trying to learn about God, learn about you know, they, they have become fed up with material life. I don't know how many, I can remember still when I was fed up with material life. And I came to a point in my life when I said, okay, this Krishna, I looked through my window in my apartment. I, was, I remember I was working on my thesis and I was thinking, there's got to be something other than this. There must be, there must be. Because I could see my whole future in front of me, right? I'm writing my thesis, I'm getting ready to get into the world, and I already know what it was like just to get to the place of writing a thesis. And I'm thinking, is this what it's gonna be like, the rest of it? And so I remember looking out of my window um, and praying, asking Krishna, asking God. At the time, I didn't know, I have no understanding about Krishna asking God, is, uh, what, is there something other than this? There's got to be something other than this. And within a, few, within a few months, actually, my life started changing. Someone that was a devotee, actually I was at that time a worshiper of Lord Shiva. I was very dedicated. I had been worshiping Lord Shiva for, for six years. Because in our search, in our pursuit of God, we go, we, I think all of us have gone through many different um, paths to try to understand, to get some understanding of God. And as we have pursued spiritual life, we have come across many so pseudo teachers, teachers that can only take us to a certain place, right? They can only take us to a, a certain point. My husband was sharing a story yesterday. Um, we were invited by an amazing couple for lunch and at their home, uh, my husband was telling the story of how he met our Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami. And he was sharing that at that time he was practicing meditation with a pseudo teacher, a teacher that had some understanding, but, and, and actually maybe even convincing this, the, her, it was a her, her students, that she had more understanding than she really did. So when my husband heard um, His Holiness back to Tia Tamaraj's voice on the radio, actually that's how he heard uh, my, that's the first time he heard my Guru Maharaj. He was listening to the radio, and there was my Guru Maharaj speaking on the radio, on a, on a program. And when he heard that voice, he, he, he thought, I want to hear more from this person. So he tried to find out, where, where is this person? And uh, my Guru Maharaj was speaking at that time in Howard University in Washington, D.C., 
and uh, my uh, but and Ekavir Prabhu, my husband, he he um, came to those programs to start hearing Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj. So just by hearing this personality, he could understand that this personality had some deeper understanding than he had had from his teachers that he had been studying with for years. So of course, when he came and heard Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj more and more and more, and, and Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj shared the philosophy of Krishna consciousness in his very indirect way, not very direct, um, he was able to capture my husband's heart he, he actually connected with his heart. And in that way, he actually became a devotee of Krishna. At that particular time, it was in the 1970s. It, I'm sorry, it was in the early 1990s for him in America. And the, the Hare Krishnas were, were really not very respected at all. Their, their reputation was not very good. Because in America, for whatever the reasons are, somehow, uh, by Krishna's arrangement, again, there was some covering um, in terms of people understanding the real message of the Hare Krishnas. And thanks to many of Srila Prabhupada's uh, followers, and especially like Radhanath Swami, His Holiness Radhanath Swami, who is reviving Krishna consciousness in a very positive way in the minds of the American people. And so during that time when my husband came, he, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj also, he was very indirectly bringing Krishna consciousness, the Krishna consciousness message. And so my husband didn't know that this was the Hare Krishnas. He had no clue um, because Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj wasn't very direct. And so one day, one friend said to him, um, yeah, he said, I wonder, something like, I wonder what your parents, what your family will say when they know you're a Hare Krishna. And he said, that's what they are? They're Hare Krishnas? No, I don't believe it. They're Hare Krishnas? But by that time, Krishna already had them. <laughs> because that's how Krishna works, right? They say, don't get anywhere near the little blue boy. Because if you get anywhere near the little blue boy, that's it. Your life is finished. So his life was finished because Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj had connected into his heart this message of Krishna consciousness coming from Srila Prabhupada. So we have many pseudo gurus, but all of us at different times, we're, we're, we're always looking in different ways to try to find answers. We have so many answers. We're looking for the truth. And sometimes we can become distracted by these different teachers um, in the world. And so we, it's very important to be very careful about who we're hearing from, what we're hearing. Uh, because, the, uh, you know, Krishna has created so many wonderful opportunities for people to hear of all his about all his different energies in so many ways. And it's only the devotees that gets an opportunity to carry the message of the understanding of the actual personality of Godhead. It is only devotees of the Lord. And so to meet a devotee of the Lord in our life is a very, very auspicious, wonderful, amazing experience. It's something that we all of us need to give our gratitude to Srila Prabhupada for, for the mercy that he has done in this world to bring Srimad Bhagavatam, to bring Krishna consciousness into our lives. Because this cannot be understood by our minds. I think it's time for me to stop. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I did so much on gratitude. I just really realized that, oh, this is the time, 9.15. So anyway, I wanted to close with just something very simple that I received yesterday. It's a very wonderful um, little article from the Back to Godhead magazine. This is a new Back to Godhead magazine. And um, I s this is the new one. And I saw this little article and it's really sweet. It's called The Broken Umbrella. And it's written by a very uh, dear caregiving shelter in Gopinath Temple. Her name is Suvarna Acharya. And she writes, walking on the road, my eyes moving all around, took a stoppage in a corner on a broken umbrella. Not useful for anyone now, it has been dumped here, there. Like all the things in the world, it has come to an end. Nothing in this world is permanent. As I walk ahead, I got a realization that there is one real umbrella, which is eternal, blue colored with a red hue, unbreakable, and provides shelter to anyone who sincerely endeavors to get it. Once we hold on tightly to this beautiful and sweet umbrella, then we are eternally protected. 
And that umbrella is Krishna's lotus feet. There is a price to pay, which is our sincerity and honesty at the expense of losing the lust, anger, material anger, greed, envy, and pride in our hearts. He, in return, we get pure love of Krishna. So let us be careful. Let us pray when we chant our japa to remove the putanas that may come into our hearts so that we can really get the love of Krishna. Thank you very much. I thank, sorry for taking so much time. Thank you. Haribo. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada. Haribo. All glory is to Srila Radhanath Maharaj, who we are very grateful to. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu.